Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LinkedInRef.com and in this video we're gonna learn how to play this. So before we start, I just want to say that this is probably going to be a lot easier than you think it's going to be. Why? Because it's all based around one simple walking bass line. Okay, just one simple walking bass pattern that after you learn it, you can just start adding chords to, adding notes to, uh, subtracting notes from the pattern, just playing around with the pattern to create whole new walking bass patterns, and just playing around with the rhythm as well. I'm gonna show you everything step by step. We're gonna start with the simple walking bass pattern, but before we do, I just wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Wix.com. I'm gonna probably move lickandriff.com, the website, over to Wix very, very soon. And they just came up to me and said, hey, what if we sponsor one of your videos and then you can just go ahead and make another one of your hour long masterclasses. Just come up with the best idea for a lesson you have and we'll sponsor it. So this is what I came up with and they sponsored it. Wix, if you don't know, is a website building website. You just go to Wix.com. The link is in the description. It's very simple, Wix.com. You go over there, you choose one of their 500 templates and you have a website. It's that easy and it's free and the websites are gorgeous. So go over to Wix and if you need a website, that's your place to go. Let's start the lesson. The walking bass pattern is this. That's it. That's the walking bass pattern. Okay, so that's what we're gonna learn first. I'm gonna play it slower so you can hear it. Okay, it's that simple. It's the E7 walking bass pattern. That's what we're gonna base our entire lesson on. Okay, this is the basis for everything I play. So you put your first finger on the second fret of the A string. Okay, the B note. Why? Because this is your anchor. For the time being, this is your anchor. Okay, we're gonna learn the walking bass pattern first. So this is your anchor, meaning that you keep this finger on the second fret all the time. Look at my fingers. Okay, this is my anchor and I'm using one finger per fret. Frets two, three, four, and five. Okay, each with a different finger. Fingers one, two, three, and four. Four frets, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we're putting this on the second fret of the A string. Okay, that's the basis for what we're gonna play. So, the pattern goes like this. Zero, zero, three, four on the E bass. Okay, and you play three and four with the second and third fingers. Okay, then on the A string, you play two, two, four, two. So it's zero, zero, three, four, two, two, four, two. Okay, now this is one bar. The second bar is this. 5, 2, 4, 2 on the A string. Okay, 5, 2, 4, 2. And then 
zero zero three four on the E string again. Okay, so this was. Five two four two on the A string, zero zero three four on the E string again. So what you have is this zero zero three four two two four two five two four two zero zero three four. That's it. That's the entire pattern. Okay, so you play it. Okay, now the important thing to notice is that you have 0, 0, 3, 4 at the beginning and at the end of the line. Okay, so if you want to play it twice, if you want to loop it, you play this. 0, 0, 3, 4, 0, 0, 3, 4 again, okay, as the beginning of the next line. The wrong way to play this would be this. This is an incomplete line because you have a bar and a half and you want two bars. So you play zero, zero, three, four at the beginning and at the end. And then when you start again, you play zero, zero, three, four again. So if you end on E and start again on E, then you're gonna play zero, zero, three, four twice. Okay, that's important. So listen to it. Three, four, and then zero again for the next bar. Why is this two bars? Because it's one and two and three and four and okay, and then it's one and two and three and four and okay, it's eighths. So this is the walking bass pattern. This is the E7 walking bass pattern. And remember, it's two bars. Now, the A7 walking bass pattern is the exact same thing, okay? The exact line, finger-wise, fret-wise, okay? Exactly the same, only one fret higher. Higher physically, lower, uh, higher musically, lower physically. You go down a string. Okay, so now you have your finger on the D string and you play the line starting from the open A string. Okay? Again, this is two bars. If you want to play one bar, you play this. This is it, just one bar. Now, another added benefit is that if you want to uh, strum it, you have a power chord, and then you can add this as your harmony when you're playing the bass line, and you can add this as your harmony when you're playing the next sequence of notes. So you have instant harmony. So this is one way to play it already. You can play both strings all the time, okay? On E7, you play strings E and A. On A7, you play strings A and D. And instantly, you have groove. Okay? So this is the first way to play this, right? The first way to play this would be this. Okay, but the other way is a lot cooler than that because you have groove, you have, uh, you have dynamics. So, and you can palm mute it if you want. Okay, I think I just palm muted stuff. I just went, I just went with the flow. Anyway, back to the lesson. Um, no distractions yet. We still have a long way to go. Um, 
so what you play, you know the the blues, the the twelve bar blues sequence. It's E seven, A seven, E seven, E seven. So what do you do? You play one bar of E, one bar of A, then. Two bars of E, meaning the whole pattern. So it sounds like this. One bar, then one bar of A. Okay? And then two bars of E, so you can play the whole pattern. Okay? And then you have two bars of A, so you play the entire sequence on A. Then you have two bars of E7 again, so you play E7 again. You got the point. So it's half a sequence, just one bar, half a sequence on A, just one bar, then the entire sequence on E, the entire sequence on A, the entire sequence on E. Right? So let's play it. It sounds like this. comes the final line which is B7 A7 E7 B7 what do you do there now comes one small addition B7 it's this okay now this is optional because you can play this okay the the normal um, blues cliche where you do a B5 Okay, two on the A string, four on the D string, and just add six on the D string with your pinky. Okay, but I think this is a bit boring. Okay, we're gonna make a lot more interesting stuff later on with fingerstyle. But the first uh, B7 pattern I want to teach you is this. Um, it's two and two on the A string with your second finger. Okay, you play this twice, the B bass. Okay, with your second finger, because now you need your first finger on one on the D string, and you play one and four. Okay, four with the pinky. Right? So you play two, two, one, four. Okay, on the A string, and then one, four on the D string. And then you play two, two, one, four again, but this time you play this. It's two, two, one on the G string, and then four on the D string again. Got it? So it's two, two, one, four on the A and D strings, and then two, two, one, four on the G and D strings. Okay? So this is one bar, okay? Because it's uh, one and two and three and oh, it's hard to count along with it. One and two and three and four and okay. So to count out loud. Um, anyway, this is one bar, and then you have a seven. So you just play half the pattern uh, again. Okay, on A, and then you play half the pattern again on E, because you have E7. Okay? So it's that simple. It's half A, half E. And then it's 0, 1, 2 on the A string. Okay? Or... Let's wait with the OR. It's 0, 1, 2 on the A string because it's B7 again at the end. That's the turnaround. Okay, so um, if you want to make this a bit, a bit more interesting, you can play uh, power chords. You can play A5 to A sharp 5 to B5. Okay, on 5 and 7 on the E and A strings. Then... 6 and 8, then 7 and 9, okay, so, or another way, 
you can do zero one on the A string and then play B7. Okay? Even if you just play the patterns up till now, it still works as a turnaround. Listen to this. See? It works. Even if you play the boring way, still works. You can insert the B7 in there. That's it. That's your first step. Okay? So, and, and this is a lot of fun too. You can do a lot with this. Okay? We're, we're gonna do a lot with this simple pattern um, even as we play the finger style stuff. Okay? We, you can play with this. You can play around with this for months. Seriously. Even years you can come up with new patterns. But first we'll learn the finger style um, variation of this, and then we're gonna start playing around with it. Okay, so have a little bit of patience. The name of the lesson after all is finger style walking bass blues. So let's play the finger style first. All right, so from the top, E7, A7. E7, E7, A7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7, B7. That's your basis, right? There is a pun there, but I'm not gonna say it. All right, let's see how we can add chords to it, okay? The easiest way is to add a chord instead of the first note. Instead of the first zero, you just play E7. So it would sound like this. Okay, I play E7 with the pinky. I play E, that's the E chord. I take uh, my third finger off of the D string and I put my pinky on three on the B string. That's, that's my favorite voicing of E7 because the, seven, uh, the seventh note is uh, accentuated through an octave. So that's my favorite way of playing this. But you can play this E7 without the pinky. You can play E and add the pinky on three. That's another E7. You can do whatever E7 you want. You can also do this. If you can do it. Um, I mean the the funky E7, the E7 uh, sharp nine. Go go. This is boring. Her anyway. Um, she's not a blues type. Um, all right. So add the chord on the first right, the first beat of every bar. Okay, it's E7, A7. Remember, we're playing a 12 bar blues here. So. listening closely, you'd have noticed that I missed a few chords, okay? Whenever I played the whole picking pattern, uh, the whole walking bass pattern, I should have played the chord instead of five. Why? Because it's one, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. 
Okay, mm. it's five. Now he's going too. It's a mutiny, I tell you. Anyway, um, it should have been this. Okay, but I wanted to wait a little with that. Okay, first beat of every line. Okay, so you miss the zero. Actually, you don't miss the zero, you play the zero only as the bass note of the chord. So you replace the zero with... Some people get annoyed when I say zero instead of open string. Well, tough. That's what I'm used to. Anyway, um, I apologize if it irritates you in any way. I'm not gonna stop. Um, E7, and then you just continue. Okay, you replace the first note of the walking bass pattern. Just the first note. And then A7. And then E7. And now you should play 5. But here's the news. This is a D note. And when you play E7 with an open D string, you're playing a D note. So it actually doesn't go anywhere if you play E7 instead of just the D note. So it sounds like this. Have you heard it? This note was in there and you heard it. So you're not losing anything, you're just replacing one note with a chord that's surrounding the note. So you're playing this. Chord zero three four two two four two chord two four two zero zero three four. Did it. Now without talking. Okay, so that's the whole pattern. Okay, we replaced the first zero and we replaced five with the chord. So now let's play the entire 12 bar blues with the chords embedded into the walking bass pattern. Okay, I'm gonna be here for you and I'm gonna play it along with you. So one, two, three, four. I said we're gonna play the entire pattern and just wanna, wanted to play it one last time so you can hear how it fits in. Let's play the pattern. One bar of E. One bar of A7. One bar of E. Uh, two bars of E. Then, then the same thing with A. Place the first two. A7, E7. Got it? Uh, I made a few mistakes there because uh, I was trying to slow it down and I'm already used to playing it a little bit faster than that. Um, so I made a couple of mistakes, but if you've been listening to this, the mistakes didn't really matter because they were just small variations on the original pattern, which is exactly what you want if you want to play around with it and improvise on it. So that's what Miles Davis meant when he said there's no such thing as a mistake in music because every mistake is just a variation on what you're playing. Okay, so you, the, the most the easiest way to um, to avoid a mistake is to think, well, it's not a mistake, it's just a different scale, which would be true. And if you're playing a different scale, then you're playing a mode, so you're actually playing very sophisticated music. It's not a mistake, it's sophistication. So 
uh, there are no mistakes in music. Every note can be accounted for and every mistake can be explained. Okay, so uh, don't be afraid of making small mistakes or playing the wrong fret or whatever. Just continue playing, okay? Whenever you make a mistake, don't stop playing. Just go on, continue playing it, and the listener would most likely think that you meant it if they notice it at all, okay? So let's play the 12 bar blues pattern from start to finish without me talking, without any interruptions, right? One, two, three, four. This is how it sounds like. Now, you probably noticed that I did one A like this. I just barred the second fret instead of putting three or two fingers on, uh, and I just played this. Okay, strings um, five, four, and three. And if the second string slipped in, then it's still the A chord. So I played an A somewhere in there instead of an A7, but basically it's the same thing. Um, I was just explaining for those of you who caught this and didn't know what I was doing. So that's what I was doing. All right, the next step. The next step would be to play it in finger style. So you just play it in finger style. You use your fingers the normal way you use them. Only this time, your dynamic finger is the thumb because you're playing a walking bass line. So you play the chord like this. Okay, you play strings one, two, three, and the bass note. On E7, it's the sixth string. On A7, it's the fifth string. And on B7, it's the B string. Uh, it's the B string. It's the B bass. It's the A string again. The B string. Uh, all right. So, um, that was a stupid mistake. Uh, there are no mistakes in music, but there are mistakes in teaching music, so that was a mistake. Anyway, um, you play E, and then you just go on playing the bass notes with your thumb. Okay, you play this only in finger style. After we play this, we're gonna start having the real fun. So, one, two, three, four. Finger style. say that it took enormous uh, powers of concentration not to make this into something more complex because once you start finger styling stuff you you should you start having the urge of adding more notes which is what we're going to do right now I just wanted to show you how it goes without any embellishments and any fancy stuff but now we're gonna do the fancy stuff the first fancy thing out of the stuff is that we're gonna play the chord a lot more. Okay, like this. Even. Okay? You can play the chord around with many, many more notes. Okay, you can. Okay, you can play the chord twice. And then you have two, two, four, two, right? And two on the A string is inside the chord, so you can play that. Okay? You can play two, two with the chord, so it's. Okay? It's, it's 
chord, chord, three, four, chord, chord with two on the A string, the B note as your bass pattern. So four, two. Okay, so it's. And then, remember, five is the open D string, so you can play the chord with the open D string. So you have. Okay, so now you have this. And then. It's 2-4-2 two, two again, so you can add the chord along with 2. So it's... Now, the important thing to remember here is to go very, very slowly at first. Okay? Go very, very slowly until you're comfortable with this. Okay? There is no rush. You don't have to add all of those chords. You can just add one or two chords. You don't have to add 15 chords to every bar. You should just pick and choose whichever chord you want to emphasize and where you want to accentuate the beat, okay? Or just give a backbeat or an offbeat. Um, it takes time to implement and really feel the, the choices when you play, but when you practice this, don't try to add all the chords at once, okay? All of these, okay? First, second, and third strings, okay? Just choose one or two and add them. And then after you add them and get comfortable with them, just add more if you want, okay? It doesn't sound good if you just play this. Okay, it's too many chords. It's not too many chords, it's one chord, but it's too many notes. Okay, it's just too many block chords added to the pattern. So you wanna choose the chords. You wanna choose the places where the chord would appear. Okay, so that's probably the only advice I can give you about this. Just add one or two chords here and there and leave the rest to the bass notes. Okay, so You can add it to the zero, to the two, then to the open D string, okay, instead of five, and then two again, and leave this to the bass notes. The same thing with the A7. Exaggerating uh, for for the demonstration. Okay, I just I'm playing this um, too harsh, so you can hear everything clearly. Okay. Now it's the same thing. You can play the open uh, the open A string along with the chord. Okay, you can play it twice and then 2-2 two, two with the chord twice, then the open G string. I recommend that you play the G string with your thumb uh, because the thumb gives a different dynamic than the three fingers. So use the thumb because it's technically a bass note because it belongs to the walking bass pattern. Okay, even though it's not a bass note, it's technically, it serves as a bass note. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. So, um, by the way, I like to put the A7 instead of with these fingers, I like to put it here with these fingers, fingers one and two, okay, on the D and uh, B strings on the second fret, because then I can use um, my third finger for three and my pinky for four. Okay, and then I can do a hammer on if I want which we'll get around to in the next part of the lesson. Uh, you can use it, okay? You can use your pinky, 
if you use these two fingers. If you use this finger, it's gonna be a lot harder to reach with your pinky and you're gonna need the pinky anyway. So why not make it easier on yourself? All right, so on the A, it's the same thing. On the zeros, on the twos, on the open G string, okay? And then on the two, okay, and then you leave the rest to the bass notes, or not, you can play, okay? Add the chord to it if you want. Okay, it's up to you. You make your own arrangement. That's what I always aspire to, to having you make your own arrangement. Um, and then, on the B7, actually on the B7 you have many, many choices. Um, so, I'll, not many, many choices, but you have a lot of choice on the B7. So, let's start by playing the pattern. Okay, the... this pattern. So put the B7 chord on. You can take the pinky off and play strings 2, 3, 4, and 5 or strings 2, 3, and 5. Okay? Strings 2, 3, and 5. Give it an economic feel and then they, en they enable you to do this. Okay? Or just have a clean sound and create a separation between the chord and the bass notes because this is a very tight-knit chord uh, and this has a distinction between the bass note and the chord while this kind of doesn't so if you only play strings 3, 4 and 5 the bass note is a little more distinct Okay, so again, up to you. You can play the entire chord if you want. Okay, but I prefer to play strings two, three, and five, and then I don't have to put the pinky on. So, again, you can play it with two, two on the A string, and then you can play it with one on the G on the D string as well. Okay, or you can play. One and four on the D string by themselves. Up to you. Or up to you. Uh, and then you play the chord again. Okay, the entire chord with the bass note. Because uh, two is already on the G string. So. Now, why are you playing the bass here? Because if you just play this, it's there's no real chord in there. There's no chord sound. It will sound really weird. Listen to it. You see? There's a, that's a long time to go without a bass note. So just play the chord again. This is in there. And then one on the G string and four on the D string. Okay, so it's got it, and then you have the half A again. Okay, and you can add the chord whenever you want. This is too much, of course, but just for um, for an example. Okay, now, um, now we're gonna play this and then we're gonna improvise. We're gonna check out how we can change the picking pattern and uh, the picking pattern, uh, how we can change the, the walking bass pattern and how we can change the rhythm. Uh, this was, this wasn't a blues uh, rhythm. This was a rock and roll rhythm. Okay, we've been, we've been <clears throat> excuse me, we've been playing rock and roll so far. If we turn it into blues, it's, it'll sound like this. Okay, instead of... Which 
is what we've been playing so far. By the way, it's a good thing that I just played this because I wanted to show you what I do when I play E7. I do this. Okay, I slide my second finger to 4 to play the 4. Okay, it's... Okay? Okay, it's just... Um, it's uh, why uh, the reason I do this is to prepare my finger for the returning chord. Okay, it's a lot easier to put the chord back on if you already have the finger in place. So instead of changing a finger, okay, it's not that much of a difference. Okay, you still have to put the chord back on, but it does help. Okay, it shaves off like. 15 milliseconds off of it. Um, it I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, I, ha I, don't, I have no idea what a millisecond even feels like. So, all right, um, let's play this. This is kind of what it sounds like, only grooveless. So now I'm gonna play the entire 12 bar blues, still in rock and roll rhythm. We haven't changed rhythm yet, um, and hopefully with a lot more groove. So it'll sound like this. Try to pay attention to the chords. Okay, this was a mistake. It was two bars of E7. Let's go again. This is starting to sound like finger style now, doesn't it? So this is your basic finger style version of it. It's not very basic, mind you. It's still a lot of work to get it going. But once you get this down, you can turn to improvising, okay? Now, you start improvising on the original pattern, okay? You take the original pattern and you improvise with that first, okay? To get the feel of what you can do with it. And then you try to apply it with finger style. I say try because it's a lot harder to apply walking bass changes into finger style than into just a walking bass pattern. But there's a way out of this. There's a way to kind of go in between finger style and the pattern, which is this. Okay, we, it's a power chord, so. so you can still improvise and play in finger style and you can alternate between you see you can alternate between full chords and power chords okay so what you do is you bar this you bar the second um, the second fret this time on the A and D strings and you have the E string open and you play the E bass with the thumb and the A and D strings with these two fingers. Okay? And on A5, you do the same thing with A, D, and G. Open A with the thumb, two and two on D and G with first and second fingers. So, try to play it, uh, the, just the, the original pattern.
Okay, now um, once you're comfortable with this, you can start playing around with it. Now, what you want to remember is that you want to keep playing. Okay, you want to keep playing one and two and three and four and all the time. So you can play whole new patterns. You can repeat notes. You can repeat licks. For example, you can do this. That's it, just zero, zero, three, four, zero, zero, three, four, and you have a whole bar. And then you can do this. Okay, just zero, zero, three, four, all the way. And that's a variation. Okay, it's a valid variation. Now you can change the sequence of the two, two, four, two, five, two, four, two. Okay, um, let me just play you a couple of examples. up first. Okay, just let your fingers, um, I, I was a little bit nervous there for a second, don't know why, um, just, just try to come up with new sequences of fret numbers, okay, in your head, just Try to come up with new sequences, write them down and play it. As long as it's eight numbers, it'll fit a bar. Okay, it'll fit inside one bar. Um, let's go for um, 2542 five, two, five, five, two, if I remember it. Okay, it works because it's the same notes of the picking pattern, oh, the picking pattern of the the walking bass pattern. It's the same notes of the walking bass pattern and then you just jumble them around. Okay, now try to combine the, the strings. Try to play uh, something on the A string and then complement it on the E string, something like this. Okay, I added four on the E string and then I came back to two on the A string. Okay, now I did, okay, that was the original pattern. Then I just did four, five, four, two. And I started again. Now I subtracted zero and played everything and then added a note at the end. Um, it's a lot easier than you think it is. Just take your guitar and try it. Okay, if you know the pattern and you've been practicing this, then you'll have little trouble just playing around with the note sequence. Just play it a little bit slower if it's difficult for you and just come up with new sequences. Okay, I don't want to give you specific sequences because then some of you will play that and will be satisfied with that and say, all right, that's a new sequence and I'm playing both of them and that's it. No, I'm not gonna make it easy on you. I want you to try and improvise new sequences. Um, let me give you just a couple of examples, okay? I played 0034 on the bass and then I went backwards. Backwards, I played five, four, two on the A string and then uh, four and zero on the E string and it sounded like this. Okay? And then you start again, so it's... Okay? It's that easy, you just turn it around. Um, or let's do a repetitive one where you repeat a few notes. Mm. Let's see if I remember what I just did. Yeah, I did two, four, two, four, five, four, two, four. Okay, just made it up on the spot because I was trying to just come up with a new sequence of fingerings. I just let my fingers play. Um, and then the next step after you improvise with it a little 
Okay, let me just show you just a little bit of improvising. said you should do three four all the time you can just do four zero or three zero or four zero three zero or uh, one string and then the other string like this or okay it was uh, five on the a string four on the E string, then four two on the A string, then three on the E string, and th start a new bar. Okay, I didn't plan this. I just tried to come up with new patterns, with new fingering patterns. Okay, or another way to do this, if coming up with new fingering patterns is difficult for you, you can write down sequences. Just write two lines down and just try to write sequences of eight notes. Okay, comprising of this. Okay, 0, 3, 4, 2, 4, and 5. The notes you're using. Come up with as many patterns as you can. Eight notes. Okay, just eight note bars and then play it and see what sounds good and what doesn't sound too good. And then play the good stuff. Okay, and that way you learn what fits your style. Okay, that's w one way to do this. Another way to do it is to just play one chord for a long, long time and just let yourself go. I'm gonna try and let myself go. why I just played. I just let my fingers play. That's why I don't look at the guitar. That's why I just unfocus and let my fingers play. And I just listen to what comes out and I try to complement it with the next line. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. But that's improv. So unless you try it, you won't know what fits your own style. So try it. Now the next step. Okay, this is only the first step. The next step is to add uh, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides into it, okay? But do that only once you're uh, comfortable with improvising. Okay, something like this. trying things out. You see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I just let go of what doesn't fit. Um, or I work on it so it does fit. Okay? Improvising is also coming up with ideas and then working on those ideas to create new patterns. If you like a pattern, write it down and work on it. Um, so I hammered on three to four. Okay? And then play two. I pulled off 5 to 4 or hammered on 4 or double pull off from 5 to 4 to 2 okay and then you can combine it okay 5 4 2 and then 3 hammer on to 4 on the bass and then 2 again on the A string okay that pattern works as well so Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No harm done. You're learning how to play. Um, if I work on it for a couple of days, it would sound awesome. Why? Because I trust my fingers to come up with nice ideas. Um, Alright, so what do you do with the B7 line? 
Um, again, you play around with it. You can play around with it as well. You can repeat notes, don't forget. You don't have to do all the time. So um, you can change the sequence of the notes. Okay, I started with this. I played one bass note and then I started with this right away. And then you move on to A. So again, try to change the sequence. idea. Now for finger style. Um, it's a lot harder to um, improvise bass, walking bass patterns with finger style. So I suggest you write your ideas down, stuff you come up with, and either play them like this show you that it works as well. You can play it as a whole chorus, uh, a whole round of 12 bar blues, and then go back to. Or you can alternate, you can play this. alternating between the pattern with the chords to the power chords with your improvisations. Or the harder way would be to just try and play new sequences with the bass notes and the chords. Um, that requires a lot of patience because you're probably gonna play a lot of things that won't sound, uh, that won't satisfy you. Because, again, it's really harder to play a walking bass line when you have the chord along with it because sometimes they clash. Okay, you have the chord to consider. So, let's try and see what, what I can come up with. Nothing, apparently. too bad. It wasn't 12 bar blues, but it wasn't too bad. Um, there were moments there when I said, oh my god, I'm, I'm, what is this? But I kept going, and you see, it sounded nice. I have no idea what I just played, but it sounded nice, because I trusted my fingers again, and if something didn't sound right, I went back to the original pattern, or played a bass note. Okay, an E bass, A bass, or B bass, uh, a root note, and then moved on from there. Um, what I just learned from this was that you want to simplify the picking patterns. You want to simplify the walking bass patterns. Um, so what I did mostly was this, I think. Okay, I played 0, 3, 0 instead of... Zero three four. I don't think I played four on the um, on the E bass anywhere in this, so I just played three, and that enabled me to move on to different stuff. I also think I played the open A string something uh, somewhere in there and inside the E chord. So it was. I used the A string. Okay, I didn't see that coming. My fingers just did it by themselves. And if I wasn't that 
confident in my fingers, okay, I, I trust them completely. If I hadn't trusted them completely, I would have said, that's a mistake. There's no open A string in the pattern. But now there is, because I just improvised one and it worked. And if it hadn't worked, then I wouldn't have played it again. Okay, that's what you should um, feel when you improvise. Don't be critical on yourself. If you're critical, then you're gonna stop trying. Don't stop trying, because the more you try, the better you improvise. That's the rule. You learn to improvise by improvising. Okay, so now let's turn this into a blues, finally. Um, I saved this one, this, this part to the end because when you turn this into a blues and you turn this into a <laughs> rhythm, uh, it kinda makes everything a little bit more confusing. Why? Because now it's not one and two and three and four and it's one and two and three and four. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you're playing one, three, one, three, one, three, one. And you treat it as one and two and three and four and one and two. So now you have that to take into consideration and embed in your playing. So that's why I saved it to last. So if you're not 100% comfortable with any of what we just played, save the blues rhythm till later, okay? But the blues rhythm will sound like this. Okay, uh, so every second note gets pushed around a little to fit snugly with the next beat. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four instead of one and two and three and four and. So in finger style it sounds like this. So it's up to the bass notes. It's up to the thumb to play. Okay, so again, I suggest the same thing, play it slowly. Okay, until you feel comfortable enough with this, I suggest you start by playing the original pattern and only then improvise on the blues rhythm. because I feel comfortable. I've been playing this for an hour now. Um, and now comes the very, 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 very small variations, which are actually very huge variations with the B7 and the final line, the B7, A7, E7, B7, turnaround. Um, you, can, you can lead into B by playing zero one two, okay, and you can lead out of B into A by playing two one zero. Okay, you can add that. So you can do this. Um, no, there's no. My mistake, sorry. Uh, if you don't want to play this and you just want to play a B chord, you can lead into it by 0, 1, 2 and get back to the A by 2, 1, 0. Okay, that's one option for the B chord. So. Okay. 
Now you can do only one of them. Okay, you can add this to the end of the the original pattern and replace the last two notes. Okay? 210 leads back from B7 to A7. Then um, what I like to do to just um, diversify a little is this. Okay, that's one variation of the final uh, line. Instead of going to B7 at the end, you can do this, E to A to E, E7 to A7 to E7, uh, by going like this, E7, and then it's 2, 3, 4 on the E bass. Okay, and you can uh, still leave these two fingers here and play the chord. Um, while doing two and three, and then play four alone. Okay, and then A. And then you can play three, two, one on the E bass. Okay, and then E. And you start again. Um, so you can leave this finger on, excuse me, and... Um, and then play three and two while still playing the A7 chord. So, okay, so um, the ending would be B7, A7, E7, A7, E7. So it's. Um, That's one way to variate. And as usual, you can diversify your chord use and just add a chord every now and then. Okay, now if you play strings one, two, and three open, um, it doesn't do much harm if you just do it at the end when you take the chord off. Okay, it's kind of a variation. It's, it's actually playing E minor for a moment there. And, you know, it just diversify uh, the chord you're playing. So it's kind of a transitional chord. It's not really uh, an emphasis chord. So you can do that. Slowly it was this, two, three, four, open strings, and then the same on A7, two, three, two, one, open strings, then again, E, so, you see, you didn't hear that much of a difference. So that's one way to do it, uh, to variate. And I also finished on this line cliche. So it's just uh, a normal um, old school walking bass blues finish. So it's just four, five, six, seven on the E string, and then five, six, seven on the A string, and then. E7 sharp 9 or E sharp 9 dominant. So this is um, 7 on the A string, 6 on the D string, 7 on the G string, okay, uh, a 7th chord head, and your pinky on 8 on the B string. So it's 7, 6, 7, 8 with the E bass. So it's four, five, six, seven on the E string, then five, six, seven on the 
a string so it was you can end um, let's play let's play around so So, um, that's the fingerstyle walking bass blues masterclass I came up with. So, thank you to Wix.com for sponsoring this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this. Go to their website, choose one of the templates. There are hundreds of beautiful templates for any purpose whatsoever. Just choose one and you'll have an instant website. Okay, that's all your own. And uh, so thank you, Wix, for sponsoring this lesson. Now, you can go to the website, lickandriff.com, and download the tabs for this website, uh, for this website, for this, for this lesson, and practice with the tabs, all right? And then have the basis for improv, and just have the tabs right in front of you so you can go to the website, download the tab, and practice with the tabs. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, share this lesson with your friends, whoever you know who plays guitar. I'm sure they'll appreciate this if they ever wanted to play fingerstyle walking bass blues or rock and roll. Or if they haven't thought about it, now they will. When they see you play it, and you'll play it, and you'll improvise, and you'll make a terrific composition and you'll improvise a great, great, great variation on this because I trust you. If, you. if you've reached this part of the lesson, then you're gonna do very, very well with this uh, because you have patience. And if you have patience, you've got what it takes. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very, very much for watching and Go play this. Go get this under your fingers now. Enjoy.